गुड मॉर्निंग टू ऑल गुड मॉर्निंग प्रिंसिपल सर प्रोफेसर यहाया प्रोफेसर फहद प्रोफेसर सुधाकर सुबोधी मिस्टर नरेश एंड माय कोलीग्स फैकल्टी मेंबर्स फ्रॉम डिफरेंट इंस्टीट्यूट्स स्टूडेंट्स सर एम एस समद ऑल्सो प्रोफेसर एम एस फहद या समद प्रोफेसर समद एंड वेरियस इंडस्ट्री पर्सनस Uh, I welcome you all on behalf of Satyuk Darshan Institute of Engineering and Technology for this five-day faculty development program on advances in thermofluids and turbo machines. Uh, first of all, I would like to introduce our renowned chief guest, Professor Yahya. Professor Yahya has done his B.Tech from Aligarh Muslim University and Ph.D. from the University of Liverpool, England. He has joined IIT Delhi in 1967. as a faculty member and uh, remain the head of the mechanical department from 1987 to 1990 before, com before coming to teaching profession he worked with hindustan construction uh, company bombay as well as with, with british ship research association in england professor yaya has designed various new courses in iit delhi like gas dynamics turbo machines power plant for undergraduate and postgraduate students he has supervised dozens of phds and several mtechs and also guided various btech projects he has over 60 national and international research papers publications in his name he is the author of many popular books like turbo machines elementary gas dynamics fundamentals of computer uh, computation of fluid flow with aircraft and rocket propulsion turbines compressor and fans I hope that uh, you have studied uh, these books in your B.Tech or M.Tech, as I have studied in my uh, M.Tech in these books, in, uh, also during the gate preparation. So now I will uh, invite uh, Principal Sir to welcome our audience as well as welcome our Chief Guest, Professor Jaya. Principal Sir, uh, uh, thank you, Dr. Deepak. Am I audible? Yes, sir. Audible, sir. Ah. Uh. uh so first of all i'd like to welcome all my uh, participants faculty colleagues uh, people from the industry researchers and uh, uh, of course uh, my guru and uh, uh, the revered professor s m yahya i still recall i was thrilled when i joined iit uh, uh, i studied from his book during my btech days and there was the only book uh, on gas dynamics and uh, which there was no other book and uh, his book on uh, turbines fans and compressors was very popular especially for the gate preparation and uh, when i joined i saw his uh, room and i was so thrilled and i walked in and he was so humble and he took Uh, he was very amiable and he asked me to sit down and had a long chat so i i am indebted to him uh, because of his uh, scholarly guidances uh, which he 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 gave to me and um, uh, i would uh, uh, say that uh, whatever achievement science and technology is uh, at the rapid exponential pace it is achieving it is just because we have these veteran giants on whose shoulders we have taken the jump if we forget our uh, elders in academics and research it will be very unfortunate very very unfortunate and unethical so i thought to invite him and uh, um, and he readily agreed despite his age and uh, not so Uh, uh not so good health and um, and uh, i i i i'm uh, i find no words that he uh, uh, accepted my invitation sir uh, welcome you all welcome you uh, to this uh, fdp and uh, we would like you to hear from you and uh, have blessings from you uh thank you all sir professor yahya thank you dr deshmukh and the principal good morning to everybody it's nice that the, the dr deshmukh has arranged this 
meet on application of fluid dynamics in the design and performance of turbo machines. I'm sure this interaction and cross fertilization of ideas will benefit everybody. Thank you for coming. Have a nice day. Uh, thank you, Professor Jaya, uh, for your nice blessings. Uh, now uh, I will uh, like to introduce our uh, today's speaker, uh, Professor uh, Fahed Anwar. Uh, he has done his B.Tech and M.Tech from Aligarh Muslim University and PhD from IIT Delhi. His research area is computational fluid dynamics and heat transfer. Uh, he has joined as uh, uh, assistant professor in Anigri University in 2007 and now he is associate professor at the same university. He has also been the visiting faculty at IIT Kanpur. He has taught many courses in B.Tech and M.Tech uh, like thermodynamics, gas dynamics, computational methods in heat and fluid flow, advanced conduction and radiation, applied numerical methods and so on. Uh, Dr. Fahed Anwar has supervised around seven PhD students, 13 M.Tech students, and many B.Tech projects he has supervised. He has more than 50 research publications in various international journals and national and international conferences. He has been awarded with Best Project Award at IIT Delhi. He, he is also the reviewer in some reputed journals like International Journal of Numerical Methods in Fluids, Computer, uh, computer and fluids and physics of fluids. So I request principal sir to formally welcome uh, uh, Dr. Sayed Fahed Anwar uh, and also to start the session. Uh, uh, before I uh, formally welcome, I would like to also uh, welcome our able uh, uh, speakers which will be in the following days who are still present uh, in our meeting here. Uh, we have chosen uh, stalwarts in their area, um, in the area of uh, both from academia as well as industry. And I hope uh, all of you will enjoy and uh, have a great learning experience. Professor Samad is an expert uh, in uh, uh, marine energy and Professor Subudi in uh, uh, nanofluids and uh, Professor uh, uh, Fahad in the area of uh, therm uh, computational fluid dynamics. And uh, we have a uh, turbo machine uh, uh, expert from Siemens here, Professor Naresh. Uh, Mr. Naresh. So I would welcome uh, all of you and thank you all for uh, uh, agreeing to be a part of this uh, uh, five day FDP and I, uh, I wish and uh, uh, assure you all that it will be a very intense session, uh, all these sessions, and uh, will be a great learning experience. experience. I now invite uh, Professor Fahed to start with his presentation. Uh, Dr. Uh, Fahed. Uh, very good. Uh, uh, I need to unmute myself. Sorry. Uh, I I hope I can I am audible to all. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. So uh, I would like first of all I would like to thank uh, all the organizers of this uh, webinar uh, for inviting me to be to be able to present uh, to you some um, something. I will start with a very very. I have two presentations, one today and one on the ninth. And uh, in this uh, presentation. Uh, I am uh, I'm only uh, discussing some very uh, basic uh, ways uh, of uh, you, uh, uh, some very basics of CFD, assuming that 90% uh, of the people who are doing this FDP doesn't know how to do, how people how to do CFD and how to use it for uh, uh, for other uh, use it for for your benefit and your research. So just I'm trying to, in this presentation today, 
i am introducing you to the to the mechanism and of using cfd and plus uh, uh, what are the things which you should take uh, into account when you are using cfd not blindly as a just a tool for that um uh, not be used blindly so again um, i am going to just as the topic suggest i am only introducing um uh, introducing computational fluid dynamics i think uh, then uh, professor subudi and uh, my learned colleague uh, professor Sam samad will be able to take this further and apply to nano fluid dynamics and uh, and uh, turbo machinery and and you can see that how um, those flows uh, what are the important things are there to map to manage in those flows so so first important uh, first thing is you know first thing we should learn is why what are the different approaches to solve any problem so any fluid flow problem particularly so what i think is that there are three approaches which is very much clear to everyone which is experimental theoretical and computational and you can see that the advantage of using an experimental uh, methodology is that it is capable of uh, being the most realistic that means you can try to be as close as early as possible and since you have certain data um to of measurable quantity you can claim that it is if there is something then it has it has been measured but again there is the the care lies in carefully designing the experiment where you whatever you perceive uh, uh, should be cover should be there in your uh, in your experimental modeling so again the problem lies two ways is once the equipment which is required may be of high calibration and um, secondly there is a scaling problem like if you want to do do uh, fluid mechanics of a uh, aircraft which is flighting you can't do uh, flying aircraft you can't do simulate in uh, lab though we have very very big wind tunnels available at nal and uh, and iit kanpur but still it requires uh, requires some amount of approximation or scaling issues Uh, then there is sometimes there is a difficulty of measuring those quantities suppose there is you want to weigh, measure measure the turbulence uh, intensity of a very very small then you need a hot wire cal calibrator now if you have a heated flows then you have to wire use hot wire uh, hot wire hot wire two hot wires one for measuring the um, measuring the velocity fluctuation and one for measuring temperature fluctuation which is very difficult and secondly as i have read in many people uh, you, many papers uh, that you need also you also need little bit of not little bit of to some uh, very good amount of expertise to extract good data from the from the experiments which is also very difficult it only comes with the practice in the second approach is theoretical approach which uh, which is uh, which is which has general information in terms of formula like like you have uh, like for an inverted flow you know that uh, in, for an inverted flow past a circular cylinder you know that uh, your drag uh, sorry your lift uh, your pressure variation is something like 1 minus 4 sin square theta which is very good in terms of formula it looks very good very appealing but it but if you use this to calculate drag you will get a zero drag um you will get a zero drag and um, but you will predict the predict lift accurately so it it is very simple it is it looks very elegant but sometimes to to had have a good amount of or you to solve those uh, this theoretically you have to get a, a approximations like in this uh, inverted flow you have a inverted approximation which clearly doesn't predicts drag which is obviously this is long back area now the third uh, thing is uh, okay um then the third uh, thing which is uh, which is the computational approach which we are right now discussing is that it can the advantage of this is it can handle complicated physics like if you want to do experiment on uh, fluid dynamics of a 
of sun uh, which is very difficult to do uh, but you can do it computationally if you can model it but again there is a there is a uh, the disadvantage is that you have truncation call errors yeah that means some amount of approximation is always always be there plus the more the difficult the problem the more the computational cost is so as the computational cost goes up the complexity goes up the computational cost goes up so computation cost includes uh, uh, run time uh, run time on uh, supercomputers plus the um, the cost of the uh, supercomputers so so the more the complex the problem is the more the computational cost so you can if you are able if you know that uh, for very complex data with dns which is the most accurate uh, simulations that is called direct numerical simulation for turbulent flow we are not able to go beyond uh, 6000 uh, re tau so so which is difficult to go so because of this this uh, thing And then there is an uh, again uh, sometimes in experiments you can model the conditions very easily like like for flows which are uh, which have dynamic boundary conditions so again those those boundary con- to implement those boundary conditions you need extra care and extra maths uh, to take care of that once it is available then it is fine then third thing is this uh, you have physical boundary conditions uh, like flow in an open domain so that will always have um have the conditions of uh, open so if you if you have in the exp- in uh, in reality it is like a domain which is open in nature that is mean it has infinite domain but in computer that thing is infinite you need to pose the boundary and the external boundary condition at some place of place in the fluid flow domain so that place may be um, uh, that place the that the, that is uh, the domain external boundary condition domain is is as small as possible the idea is that it should be as small as possible but it should be as physically correct as possible so the computational cost if it, the domain is small the computational cost will go down and you will be able to simulate more flows so so you can see that if you have uh, combustion flows where again experiments are easy but to measure every quantity there is difficult so the flows where Uh, so uh, so the flows where uh, your computational costs uh, your uh, experiments are not possible computationally you can do the ex- do the experiments and get much more detail than a than a computer than a experimental guy and uh, help in uh, understanding the physics and all those things so i will start with the what is again uh, before going into the detail we will like i would like to in, uh, see that what is cfd cfd or computational fluid dynamics basically has a discrete solution it is said to be a methodology for obtaining discrete solution of the real world fluid flow, flow problems now what is the discrete solution it is that since you don't divide any flow domain into smaller smaller parts the more the smaller the parts um small so so if we so you have it divided into a smaller part that is we have created a mesh and this mesh so the so the solution is only available at the nodes whether it is a cell centered node or a or a point a grid node uh, intersecting node it is in, it is the data is only available at the cell nodes the more they they are closed the more analytical or uh, um, uh, the lesser discrete data is there otherwise it is the data is only available at those nodes so you are say that it is a solution which is not analytical but it will always be be available at the discrete solution so so it on, on from point to point basis now if you do not do the meshing properly it that means your your mesh is slightly larger in size then and if you are you are modeling trying to model some physics which has lot of um, eddies and suppose your ed is inside that uh, inside that uh, inside that uh, mesh the smallest smallest mesh it's a city uh, the the ed is smaller than the smallest mesh size then you will miss the data so it is again very important to accurately discretize the, the data or do, uh, do the meshing properly so you need to have a slight understanding of the flow physics before you are doing the meshing 
again uh, as i have uh, already said that the number of space point provided uh, gives basically an idea of the accuracy so but if you do it uh, if you just stuff the uh, domain with number of more than number of points your computational cost will go up so that is what you know no do not so you need to attain a balance between the computational cost that is the grid points and the amount of physics which you are trying to incorporate in the flow so again i have uh, uh, dealt with this so uh, why use cfd is that difficult it is um, it is difficult to uh, insight is insight because it is it can give you a much better experimentation data uh, better details better prediction in a short time uh, it can, it can help you design faster economical um, and uh, industry uh, relevant uh, com compliances compliance products it can help you in getting uh, your design time cycle shorter so earlier when cfd was not this well developed the people used to do prototype so you de de develop something and you do go to prototyping and then see the effect of that so so now prototyping has cost involved plus the run time cycle will be more now with the advent of um, cfd you can uh, you can iterate much faster as compared to the developing a prototype and then experimenting so you can iterate in a shorter time and with lesser effort, uh, costs uh, le le uh, yeah lesser cost and you can only do prototyping for those ideas which you think are going forward so so it basically help you in designing your short term and designing the um, cycle design cycle design and development cycle for shorter so it also gives you um, an idea of um, the physical like it you can help in do a full scale simulations of fluid flows you can um, uh, simulate for any hazards like explosion radiation pollution where where you cannot do experiments you can also uh, simulate planetary bound boundary layers stellar evolution all those things you can possible because of the cfd because you are not going to do it yourself over there experiments are not diffi are difficult to provide over there in these situations it uh, it uh, in in few in some time in last few months i am working on a uh, on a fluid flow problem of uh, cardiovascular nature so where where what we are doing is that we are trying to develop a real time simulator uh, to simulate uh, patient specific geometries and um, to get a uh, get a reliable estimate of whether this whether any blockage in stenosis is going to is going to is leading towards a heart attack or not so you can do this kind of thing also using cfd so what we are doing is that we are taking ct images doing cfd and developing our tool to a uh, software for predicting this now so doing a cfd for uh, heart flows is very difficult because it amounts to fluid structure interaction non newtonian flows uh plus a, a very very important thing is this in these simulations you must have a very accurate solution is possible um, but uh, but because of this uh, uh because of these uh, uh, these flows which is now very um, computationally very good uh, we can we are able to handle these flows so high fidelity solutions are can, can also be there and for an now with the advent of piv you can do non um, invasive measurements also but uh, uh, earlier we used to have or in uh, right now also in the cardiac flows you what you do is to measure the there is a something called an ffr which is basically the pressure ratio across the stenosis so so the you measure the pressure ratio by in doing an invasive ffr which is basically that you have a probe and from with the catheter you insert the probe and measure the pressure difference across it now if you do that you are basically doing is it invasively you are also if the obviously the probe is has to be very very small but in in some sense it can you can say that it may change the pressure across pressure value at that point 
But you, since you are doing a pressure ratio, so some value is changes here, some value is changed there. If you assume that it is the similar, then the ratio cancels it out. But uh, but you you uh, it is measured. So if you are using a pitot tube, it may if you have not done it properly, it may change the value at certain time at at that point uh, exactly. At that. So it is an invasive method. Um, so so here we are trying to do it in um, non invasively. and you can always help in uh, developing a high fidelity database for for diagnosing these uh, uh, these biomedical things now these are the some examples of where cft has been used like automotive aerospace automotive and biomedical engineering i have given you one example of that um then there is a area of chemical processing hvac hydraulics people use it for uh, so you must have um, heard of uh, this uh, person called as michael phelps uh, he won a lot of uh, lot of uh, olympic medals in um, in swimming uh, so phelps uh, used uh, uh, the uh, phelps uh, uh, worked with uh, this uh, very renowned uh, biophysicist called uh, rajat mittal with the uh, uh, which is who is in george washington university so he used cfd so rajat mittal is an expert in cfd so he used ex cfd to help uh, phelps uh, uh, get his uh, um, uh, back stroke sorry uh, uh, freestyle strokes and the swimming uh, swimming uh, and swimming methodology corrected with the help of cfd so he simulated whole of the fluid flow of the of his body inside the swimming pool so it is a very very good work and uh, he is a master in that and uh, uh, you must have heard of uh, a very very old acronym of that um, the dolphins about the dolphins so dolphins have compliant surfaces over the body so what happens is that uh, uh, the dolphins uh, uh, because of the this that compliant surfaces they are able to reduce the shear stress on that uh, fluid flow on that body so so ian thorp again a um, uh, swimmer swimmer from australia he used uh, he used his swimming suit uh, which has uh, uh, which has this uh, compliance property uh, and uh, again he got a lot of uh, medals over there so people have been using this cfd for uh, for variety of things so now we get into more cfd part so cfd part is uh, cfd is basically three parts uh, pre processing processing computing post processing so as you can say that the pink is basically the um, uh, basically the uh, there has a, is the pre processing part it has three parts which has that you identify the real problem you go to the mathematical modeling develop governing equation boundary condition and initial condition and then you go to the numerical modeling part identify the discretization again and discretize the boundary condition and the initial condition am i talking talking too fast or am i am okay with you hello am i too fast or i should slow down slightly Uh, no sir it is okay sir okay okay uh, uh, if you can increase your volume slightly sir okay i will try to do that okay i will try to do that um, so uh, so so the so identify the real problem basically means that you are trying to solve the physical laws uh, the level of approximation is again as i said there the more the complex the phenomena the more the computational cost will be so you have to decide as an engineer or a physicist you have to decide that what level of complication you are trying to you will try to model the flow like if you will do in a channel flow with a gravity over there there is something called as a um, uh, thermocline so you can uh, thermocline basically is that um, it hampers the grow um, uh, the variety of uh, the fluid from going up to the down and down to up now if you do it uh, you if, if the heating is large still you get the so then your properties are very functions of uh, 
uh, your properties, physical properties are function of space and time uh, because it is function of temperature. Now you can do, you can have the same variation of the thermocline without uh, having incorporated the property variation, but still there. So that means, uh, that means that the flow physics sometimes is not affected by this. So to determine which part or which uh, level of, uh, which, which are the uh, quantities which are in, which influence the flow and which are not is again uh, a job, uh, a job of the mathematical modeling guide. So the more the time you take in modeling the fluid flow, better would be your solutions. So, so I will suggest you take if you uh, like you do not use uh, any tool, CFD tool as a um, uh, as a, just a black box. You use it uh, with a pinch of salt and uh, the first part, which is the pre-processing part. Do it at most care it as as possible. If you will do a mistake over there, and you, when you go to publish, the people will point it out. So it is. It is. It, from my experience, uh, you should try to model physics as closely as possible, but be very, very careful in math, in modeling it mathematically. You can solve any problem with the with the variety of method. mathematical models like for an example navier stokes equations as well as you can use the lattice boltzmann method uh, to solve this uh, lattice boltzmann uh, uh, or gas kinetics approach to solve the same flow for the compressible flow but uh, and you so you need to weigh your pros and cons for that so mathematical modeling is very very important to this again from the compressive from from the uh, from the mathematical model you derive the numerical methodology which should, which can be used for solving this flow. So you must be familiar with the, with what different mod methodology does. Like simple scheme uh, can solve uh, transient as well as, uh, as well as uh, steady flow simulations. So you need to see that which which scheme there. Are, there are a lot of schemes for in any in any uh, commercial software. There will be a lot of schemes to choose uh, whether. So you should be able to have. Uh, idea of all those schemes when where those schemes have been traditionally better or not so like for an example you have a lot of um, uh, models um, like uh, Reynolds stress models or turbulence models uh, in every scheme so like you have Reynolds stress model you have a k epsilon model you have spalada mass model you have k omega model you have uh, les now you should be uh, you should be clever enough to know that which scheme, which model performs better in which situation? That is that you will only get through the literature. So you need to learn the literature also. So that whether so ideally, when you have a model, uh, <clears throat> then you you must see that in which condition the model was designed, because it the model will be best when you uh, have this, the similar conditions into the flow. So, uh, to reading the literature is also very, very important before you solve it. Now, if once you have got this, then you have the solution. There will be a, uh, like if you have n by n grid, then you have n by n uh, system of equations, which is you are going to solve. Now, the solution methodology is also very critical because that will determine how, uh, how much computational time you are going to invest in this. Now, again, uh, do not use it as a black black box that whatever people have recommended you are doing just going to put those values in, inside there and solve it uh, you should have a very very good idea of like sometimes like for an example sometimes uh, the flow velocities are so small that you if you try to compute the con uh, continuity flux and all those flux it will be very very easily satisfied but if you use again a normalized mode, normalized mode for this, then the value will be different. So tolerance, how you can try, you are calculating your tolerance, whether it is a normalized or non-normalized, affects the flow. Now and intelligently, intelligently, some may choose your reference property such that you get a nicer values of flows nicer values of velocities or other things. 
now since uh, you are getting nicer values than by meaning of nicer values that, that it is of the order of one so you get a tolerance which is lesser now since you have designed your flow so tolerance is lesser so the computational time will be lesser but you are you, you are getting, getting it accurately now again in commercial cfd solvers they are all dimensional in nature they do not do non dimensional calculation but uh, i will advise so whoever are, uh, are writing your own codes and doing this problem do it uh, non dimensionally do not use uh, dimensional calculations because there you have a choice of uh, uh, non non reference parameters and if you choose your reference parameter correctly like for a natural convection there are two types of scaling available one is the convective velocity scaling and one is rayleigh number based scaling so if you know use the rayleigh number based scaling you will always get a get a values which are of the order of 1 but if you use the convection velocity scaling you will not get the values of the order of 1 so this basically reduces your uh, time now again uh, the next part is the visualization and post processing now here also you have need to take very good care of this now uh, see uh, once you have a established a flow situation you need to take a reference or a statistical data for uh, analyzing the flow now this in a statistical now to if you are doing a transient flow simulations you can do two types of stepping uh, time stepping one is the fixed time stepping one is adaptive time stepping now but when you are trying to take data for the statistics you can can't uh, take um, adaptive time stepping that will create a lot of confusion but what should be the order of that see initially sometimes you have a lesser time step but once the flow is established you do not need that uh, lesser time step you can increase your time step to be uh, for a, for a larger time uh, so the balance of these these is very again very important because that helps in your lowering your computational cost and if your computational cost is lowered your cycle time of uh, simulation is well is is less so that is also very important and take care uh, care of that there are variety of softwares available for post processing and variety of software available for uh, uh, or schemes available for uh, uh, for uh, for processing now if you have a mathematical uh, uh, again uh, the mathematical modeling in case of the mathematical model it's it comes to an initial boundary value problem solving so uh, it is for uh, i don't know uh, how much people know so ibbp is just a form of a partial differential equation with the appropriate boundary and initial conditions now uh, mathematical modeling also consists of two parts that is fluid modeling where you have uh, you decide whether the approach will be continuum or non continuum the constitutive behavior the bc the initial condition that assumptions involved and you know? Uh, has to be taken care of then you have a, if you have are doing a geometric uh, in math and then comes geometric modeling where you take care of geometry as well as the coordinate system which we are going to solve so that the that is a, again very important part sorry uh, yeah so if you are using a fluid modeling so there are two approaches again uh, continuum and non continuum approaches so uh, there is a number which is called as a nutchen number which is uh, basically the ratio of the mean free path uh, to the length scale uh, import in the flow so the, the uh, this number basically helps you in uh, in calc in uh, in deciding whether the model used can be a continuum nature or the, uh, it can be of the non, non continuum model like for if you are uh, trying to solve a, any flow which is uh, which can is visible naked so uh, you can take uh, this uh, fluid dynamics to be a continuum model uh, uh, like supersonic flows uh, subsonic flows transonic flows um, uh, incompressible flows all these flows are, will can be modeled as continuum but again if you go to the scale which is very very small like if you uh, if you are trying to help uh, model the molecular interactions like in hypersonic flows where you have a uh, um uh, the mach number ab much above 5 and um, uh, you have you mo you have to model thermochemistry also inside that uh, your mathematical model there you can't uh, can't uh, help with uh, with the continuum model you have to have the non continuum models also in this 
now there is a uh, also there is a as you as the data suggests that, that there is an overlap region which is between 0.01 to 0.1 where you can uh, use a continuum approach equations but the boundary condition would be slightly different it will uh, you have to use the velocity and temperature jump boundary conditions over there and uh, so, so, so those velocity and temperature jump boundary condition will help you in model the non continuum part and uh, the continuum part like the same equations which are the, is the navier stokes equation for which the tools are uh, easily available and developed can be used so that is how you do it uh, the fluid modeling part now for an example i have uh, just tried to uh, have a, a more uh, simplified approaches towards here there you have compressible incompressible you can uh, model compressible flow as viscous and viscid. Uh, you can use um, uh, space time dynamics and then you can decide whether the fluid you will model it as a laminar or turbulent. Uh, so those things you have to de define uh, design or that is uh, you must have uh, the uh, appropriate the relevant uh, non dimensional parameters or uh, of the flow. You have many once you decide the non dimensional parameters of the flow that will decide the flow, uh, some of the flow conditions so it is very important for uh, to to have a good mathematical model inside the flow now if you have the continuum models the laws are always the same uh, you have a basic laws uh, like uh, mass conservation newton laws of motion first law of thermodynamics and the electromagnetism which can you can use um, and, but uh, the equations can be expressed in variety of forms like one uh, one example is that sometimes you use a conservative form of uh, equations and sometimes use a non conservative approach so if you have a non conservative approach uh, uh, then uh, you uh, i have listed the mass conservation equation in the uh, non conservative and conservative approach you can see that um, the in the non conservative approach the derivative like uh, the operator uh, yeah you can see that uh, the derivative in the conservative form, the derivative in the flux is inside the derivative. Like here, the for the spatial derivative, uh, you have rho multiplied by the v, that is the flux, uh, mass flux, uh, which is over here. And uh, derivative of the, the local transport derivative is also inside the derivative. So if if uh, this is called this is the conservative form of equation. Uh, the non-conservative part, you can see that the density, which is uh, is outside the derivative of uh, spatial derivative del dot v. So, so, uh, so in uh, uh, in fluid flow simulations, uh, I, normally we prefer we prefer the conservative form of equations, and uh, nearly in all uh, con commercial uh, CFD codes. So this is the way they have they write their equations and solve. So uh, so and uh, there's a, obviously there is a uh, in our uh, next class uh, we will uh, discuss um, why this uh, this approach of using conservative form is better than the non-conservative parts. Uh, in the, especially the conservative form is especially important uh, for the. Um, compressible flows where you have a in very small space of time space and time there is a large uh, jump in uh, discontinuity and that is basically the discontinuity is shock so so if you want to uh, model those uh, large discontinuity in sm smaller amount in a smaller space of time then you have uh, this these kind of things Okay, uh, so you can see that there are these are these are the forms, total number of equations. If you put all those, those these models like isotropic Newtonian version, you Stokes and you are able to reduce the number of unknowns. So you can finally see that nine unknowns and nine equations, and you can solve the problem with the uh, appropriate boundary condition. I don't know what is it. Yeah. Now the government. Uh, this is I. Uh, this I have told. Okay, this is also I've told uh, the high speed flows uh, have discontinuous features like shock wave fluxes. So this the because of these uh, discontinuous features, better that the discretization has to be uh, akin to that. So this uh, uh, so the modeling the governing equations you can see that 
in this there are lo lot of terms involved in this so the first part is basically your local uh, acceleration and then the second part we call as the convection acceleration and this is the non linear term which is uh, there the third part is basically your pressure gradient and the fourth part is your uh, viscous terms or viscosity um you can use the piezometric uh, uh, so the in continuation to, to this you can use the continuity equation and then you can use the equation of state if you are doing this flow, uh, compressive flow now the boundary conditions you have uh, two types of boundary condition which is the one is the kinematic boundary condition and the other is the uh, so dynamic boundary condition which is over here so if i go back so kinematic boundary conditions are very uh, easy to implement and um, you can see that the normal uh, normal velocities and the tangential velocity should be equal for both for the sol solid or and the fluid surface so if you take uh, velocity and temperature um, and if i uh, so for any impervious fluid impervious solid so the velocity and uh, velocities will be equal the material on either side of it will not penetrate so there is there cannot be a velocity jump across the surface so the velocities will be equal uh, so the normal velocity will be equal so this is called the no penetration boundary condition and then you have a no slip boundary condition. if you have a deforming interface you can model it like this uh, which you can see that so, so, so pi is any discontinuous surface and then you have you can write it like this like uh, this and you can model the uh, deforming surface interface if you have a no slip interface which is will be there you know every viscous fluid um, so you can see that the tangential velocity must be equal because of that so you have a normal velocity kinematic boundary condition has, is uh, is of two types uh, one is the uh, no penetration and the no slip uh, for and for the deforming interface you can have to write the, it like this the then you have thermal boundary condition again the normal and uh, those things are then you have a dynamic boundary condition where the surface is basically uh, dynamic that means surface is changing its shape in time and uh, in shape in this and then the force is are used to model the boundary condition so you can use the this kind of boundary condition now uh, so if you are trying to use the model of geometries the simple geometries can be easily created by geometric parameters like circular pipe so you can use those those parts complex geometries are different uh, difficult to to use so uh, so uh, you can create the, these by using partial differential equation or importing uh, importing data from uh, from for the geometry like yeah like for air foil you have a complex uh, for um, uh, fourth order uh, or second order equation parabolic equation is there uh, some equation is the uh, uh, equation is the polynomial equation polynomial is there and you can from that uh, you can import the uh, import the air foil geometry inside this you can import this into any cad or ca software and um, like um, I, uh, I, uh, now now because ansys has a bigger uh, bigger uh, bigger share than any other software so this is one literally every other software has been uh, taken care by ansys you can use in any cad part like igs part uh, in, import those geometry in, inside this and do the meshing and all those so you have cartesian geometry curvilinear geometries are also used there then you have generalized coordinate systems which can you can use then you have r theta coordinate coordinate system the spherical or coordinate system so uh, if you are use any coordinate system then you can have to write your equations also in those coordinate systems so to know the um, coordinate free form equations is also a very good thing to understand the coordinate free forms of the these equations now again uh, you can see that there are a lot of um, uh, fluid flow phenomena that has to be valid like like viscous versus inflexible external or incompressible viscous single or multi phased so that is this is okay now the th next is the initial conditions so why, when are these important these are important when you have unsteady flows so unsteady flows uh, uh, only for unsteady flows these initial conditions are important um, because it doesn't have uh, uh, unsteady flows will have the effect of the initial conditions 
so uh, the again uh, you have to have a, a reasonable amount of guess to make this initial condition uh, convergent and uh, obviously the the farther it is from the real situation the initial condition is from the real situation the more time it will take the um, transient parts to settle down and the, if the transient parts are uh, parts will take large time to settle down it will take large time to uh, to simulate uh, the flow also so that is that will be a difficult thing to do again boundary boundary conditions uh, so those were were the kinematic part but apart from that there are a lot of uh, uh, boundary conditions which are available in the softwares which has like a velocity inlet uh, mass flow inlet uh, constant pressure and you know, outlet there are a lot of outlet conditions are there constant pressure uh, velocity zero gradient uh, then uh, you have a uh, pressure outlet uh, uh, such as uh, uh, so pressure so and there is a symmetry conditions also so i have given an example that suppose you have a pipe uh, and you are trying to simulate this uh, you can use the axisymmetric uh, part um, the center line has to be axisymmetric and if you are using r theta coordinates this is very important because and once you have using symmetry uh, your uh, boundary condition at r is equal to 0 is not there so that is uh, where if you use a um, spherical co uh, cylindrical coordinate system r is equal to 0 is a non is a singularity so so that is also difficult to simulate and you have methods to simulate uh, the uh, these parts uh, plus um, you have uh, some certain velocity inlet so you have a velocity equal to certain value and uh, but v velocity is 0 then you have an outlet pressure outlet condition where you specify some pressure over there now uh, in the problem with the with with the again the care has to be taken because if you using symmetry you know that the flow will be geometric similar but you do not know that the uh, flow will be uh, is the geometry similar the geometric similarity is there and because of that you are using the axisymmetric condition but you you are assuming a priori that there will be no asymmetry sy symmetry across uh, r is equal to 0 sometimes there may be but if uh, and if uh, you are using certain like temperature boundary conditions and right? like uh, lower part you are part of the cylinder you heat and the upper part, upper part of the cylinder you cool then you are creating asymmetry in the boundary conditions so then you cannot use the axisymmetric conditions in uh, here so the choice of again the boundary conditions is very important now uh, suppose you are trying to model uh, uh, turbulent flow in a pipe Uh, people uh, people do it um, uh, by using since so, so, so the developing turbulent flow develops in a long time so it, it takes a lot of computational power it will take lot of computational power if you start from developing from start to the end um, so the fully developed region comes after very late but you can enforce the fully developed conditions and use the periodic boundary conditions and shorter the domain that is how normally periodic flow turbulent flows are done uh, but if you are trying to, so then you you cannot investigate the transitionary flows but if you want to investigate the transition flows then you need to simulate the whole pipe and that will take lot of computational power over there so this is very difficult so again there is a trade off so selection of model so in this this is this particularly uh, refers to the see which part of the equations are important and when which uh, which equations so if you have a viscous and inviscid flow then the reynolds number is important uh, if you have turbulent and laminar flow then turbulent models have to be taken care of so that is there uh, if you have in inviscid uh, versus compressible flow then mach number will be will be the relevant parameter and the equation of state has to be added uh, if you are using single versus multi flow uh, single and uh, multi flow multi flow Uh, simulations then uh, cavitation number and the two fluid model has to be taken care of uh, if you have use using thermal and density gradients inside the flow then energy equation has to be taken care of, where prandtl number gravity is important grashof number is, uh, is important eckhart number is also important sometimes if you are modeling free surface flow uh, then froude's number is very important again uh, since it is a free surface flow the, the top the surface which is the boundary condition is basically moving so if it is moving then you need to use a surface tracking model so you have to track that surface and for that some people use a level set 
uh, if you are using uh, trying to simulate bubble dynamics also then weber number is important and uh, level set is again used if you are using uh, flow, modeling combustion flows uh, then chemical reactions have to be taken care of so again the modeling part now if you are using turbulent flow flows then dns uh, that is most accurate but it is too expensive to solve uh, rans uh, uh, rans equation use uh, they, they you use uh, predict uh, mean flow structures can be predict mean flow data can be predict but uh, the, there will be an excessive diffusion in the separated regions les uh, you use uh, uh, is good but again it is uh, it is uh, you only model the lows uh, you model the lows uh, low low uh, smaller frequency flows uh, smaller wavelength flows like eddies which are which is if, if it is smaller than the grid size they can they they cannot be modeled inside the les you you are more using model for the, for those those parts uh, it is lesser accurate than uh, so the most accurate is dns then there is les and dls yes and the least accurate is rans um so now these are some examples of this flows uh, these are by my own computations uh, you can see the one is the stenotic flow where the upper uh, it was the non newtonian flows and the lower one is the non newtonian flows then there is a uh, chan flow between the, by uh, between channels so these are iso uh, surfaces of uh, q and h uh, for the um, q uh, is the um vorticity part and helicity uh, part and the, you can see that uh, and the, this is for the very large uh, temperature gradient flows then uh, the uh, another uh, example is there for um, nano fluids which i modeled uh, flows uh, um, uh, inside an uh, ellipse ellipse uh, there is a flow of ellipse and across that there is a larger cylinder over there which is generating motion then uh, the example is the fluid structure interaction or vortex induced vibration of a square cylinder we have solved in our lab now um, uh, as i as i already include uh, said that uh, numerical methods includes discretization methods solvers and uh, numerical uh, parameters grid generation and transformation the high performance computing and the post processing uh, now this is uh, the last uh, fourth part is uh, very important if you are trying to model again uh, like uh, flows like which are very complex in nature like cardiac flows plus um, you are using turbulent flows so the the better the performance uh, is uh, the better the solution is and discretization you have to choose those methods which give uh, smaller uh, use smaller stencil that means smaller points Uh, to get a higher order, uh, higher order approximations of boundary and of uh, of gradients. So those methods are good. Uh, sometimes you use automatic grid generation or grid gen, uh, and sometimes you use transformation. Uh, uh, but this is a slightly uh, the transformation methodology is slightly old. Not now in good uh, people do not use. Now um, there are three kind of uh, methods which have been used by people. Uh, which is for discretizing that is one is the finite difference method finite volume and finite elements methods now finite finite difference method is the, is very very straightforward to apply uh, and it is uh, straightforward to understand also uh, it is usually used for regular grids um, then there is the finite volume method which use a uh, the finite difference method the background is that you use a uh, Uh, differential forms of the equations uh, equation uh, but um, in finite volume use uh, method you use integral differential uh, form of the equations and uh, in finite more volume method, finite element method you use uh, uh, again the differential form but you cast it into an element form um, uh, again the finite volume is the one of the most preferred uh, Uh, method for uh, for uh, nearly any type of uh, um, commercial softwares so finite volume basically can be used for um, for um, regular grids as well as uh, unstructured grids structured and structured any method can be used for this finite element also can be used for other, other grids so some of the commercial software uses finite element method some of the commercial software uses finite volume finite difference method also 
uh, is being used by some of the researchers, but for their own codes, not for um, the commercial CFD codes. Uh, uh, and each uh, remember that each type of methodology gives you the same solution. As if the grid is fine enough, they, they will lead to the same solutions. Similar solutions, not same exactly, but similar solutions. Uh, the suitability has to be checked. Uh, that is one of the important part. Now, these the finite volume methods has a if you are using unstructured grids, they cannot be of very high order of accuracy. That means it can't it can't go beyond second order uh, finite volume methods. But the finite difference method, you can increase the level of accuracy. That is up to you. Um, there are two types of uh, temporal derivatives. That is uh, the explicit and the implicit. The schemes are explicit either or the implicit schemes, uh, which we will discuss in our next class. Um, the, uh, <clears throat> for, for in a nutshell, the explicit uh, schemes are basically those where you uh, you use a, you 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 calculate everything on the next time level. Uh, using the old older time values, but in implicit methods, you use some of the values of the old time step and some of the values of the new time step of uh, new time step and get an implicit way uh, in solving this. Now, the implicit fully implicit schemes are always unconditionally stable, but explicit schemes are sometimes unstable, sometimes stable. So there are there are conditions for uh, explicit or um, uh, sometimes. Now, what is the uh, how to check that? Then there is a methodology to check the stability. There is a methodology to check the consistency of those equations. Um, that is there, and you should, you have to use use that. Now, uh, selection of uh, which discretization method has to be used. Now, if you have a numerical scheme, if you are trying to solve. Uh, uh, Compressible flows problems. They though the equation the, uh, the equations are of uh, hyperbolic uh, way. Uh, so so the hyperbolicity has to be taken in care of into uh, into account. Uh, so the methodology has to re uh, respect that. Methodology has to respect that. Uh, you can see that uh, this is uh, just an example of a discretization method. So you can see that. Uh, um, like u into del u by del x, uh, that is the convective part. We have discretized it at where now l is this the time level. Uh, sorry, l is the uh, um, yeah l is the time level and uh, the um, sorry l is the uh, y direction uh, differences. Uh, l is the x direction differences one direction and m is in the other direction so you have l minus 1 m so that is there so there is some command kind of maths which has been not very properly written um, so there is a l in is in x direction and uh, m is in the y direction uh, derivative uh, so you can see that the stencil uh, so so if you 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 and you into del u by del, del x can be written as u of that uh, that uh, l and that is the value of uh, that point into the derivative part uh, the approximation so this is this is first order approximation um, so it is so now if you uh, now uh, how to uh, calculate this there is one way is that you you differentiate it as a central scheme then it is a um, from the but if you are using in one sided differences differencing uh, if you are using the one sided differencing then uh, then uh, you need to you can calculate it from any side of the difference. Now, if you are using upwind, that means where the flow is coming. If you just you see the information comes from from the direction of the flow. So, if the derivative respects that, then you you see that we we call, call that as an upwind. Now, so in basic sense, you have two uh, directions. Uh, one is the x direction or the y direction, uh, so, so the positive and negative direction in x. So based on the value of the velocity at that point you can sense the use the direction of uh, you can uh, change the uh, where from, from which side the discretization will be done so that is what we call as an upending and then there is a viscous part uh, which is there so that is pretty much simple so again uh, you have uh, the numerical parameters which has to be taken care of uh, so these are uh, 
uh, these so once the uh, algebraic equations are there you can use the kramers rule gauss elimination lu uh, iterative methods like jacobi gauss seidel sor uh, people use a preconditioners also uh, which is like uh, multi grid one of the method is the multi grid method which is uh, available in uh, fluent uh, which is available in a uh, uh, variety of commercial software use multi grid methods which is one of the very fastest methods uh, to solve that so these are relatively older methods Uh, the jacobi and gauss seidel and sor but they are, if they are combined with the this method uh, this uh, multi grid uh, so pre multi grid is a precondition which fasts the solution of this it is very good uh, so we we use that uh, so now numerical parameters uh, needs to be like under convergence limit under relaxation factors monitors we have to monitor the residuals you have a decision to take that whether you are going to solve that is in a in a double, single precision or double precision formats that all has to be taken care of now if you are using uh, grid generation then uh, if you have using structured grid generation so this is uh, like an example of a structured grid generation uh, on an airfoil which has been cut into half uh, if you multi if you have a mirror image of that then it will be full airfoil and this is a c grid structured grids are this is a body fitted where you have fitted the body and this is a is a physical approximation but the solution of this will be done in a computational approach with computational plane which will be 0 to 1 0 to 1 in a very very simple manner um but if you have unstructured approach you can see the another grid which is there uh, which is unstructured approach you do not uh, uh, know uh, so in a structured approach once you have you know the i and j you know the what is which, which which is the which is the physical point next to this Uh, so that you know uh, beforehand in an unstructured approach if you know the node number like it is 2 uh, but uh, node number 3 will not is not necessarily in the on the right side of the or is on the left side of the node you do not know it may lie in some other place so that is what how the it is structured and unstructured grids are there now uh, what is the solution where and when to use which what part that is very important um, uh, Finally, uh, see, see, the unstructured grids are uh, traditionally used uh, for the flow problems where the geometry is difficult. Like in this situation, you have a flap, slab, uh, slat. Uh, all those things are there. So the controlling surfaces are there. So they, in that condition, you use uh, uh, unstructured grids. Mm, then uh, you have so so. This is the uh, how you transform this. So you have a structured part, and you can see that the body is. being transferred to the computational domain where the computational domain is 0 to 1 0 to 1 so you can so now you interface you change the del f by del x to uh, the uh, xi x del f by del xi and del x so the derivative will be del f by del xi and del f by del eta which needs to be calculated and xi x is it will be dependent on the matrices now this is the part of um, uh, of the high performing in post processing part so you use a multi block grid generation and multi block is suitable for uh, for post for high performance computing because for every block you can assign a number assign an, uh, another um, processor for that so they, so every software has those parts now inside it so these are the commercial cfd code which are available this is already a known process so this i have discussed so i think this is will be the on for my uh, part and uh, so these are yeah this is this is the steps so so you can see that so geometry has a vertical where you have to select the geometry geometry parameters are there then physics you have uh, for a, this is a respect to these softwares which you use so heat transfer model is can be on or off compressible model can be on a flow property you need to specify viscous model you need to check check whether on or off boundary condition and initial condition then there is a mesh vertical where you use either unstructured or structured mesh then you solve either using steady or unsteady if you are you steady or steady you have you have to specify iteratives uh, iterations and steps then you have to specify convergence levels precision single or double and then you have to cho uh, uh, choice uh, cho choose the numerical scheme you are reporting you have to be very clear what you have want you want to uh, at the outside so you have to uh, report uh, lift drag shear stress etc what are the xy plots you want to take then then there is a verification step and then there is a validation step very very important verification and validations are very important 
then you use uh, post processing tools you can cal calculate streamlines contours vectors all those things you can do that i think i have uh, uh, covered every part um, in this and uh, we will, I will uh, um, yeah i will uh, uh, rest my case um, with this uh, uh, yeah la last thing i want to conclude is this uh, we for uh, for every simple simulation these three things are very important understanding of the fluid mechanics and the modeling part of the heat transfer get uh, exposure of the physics with the solution algorithm so so these solution algorithms has to be in sync with the physics and uh, has to develop a good programming skills that uh, these three things are needed for a student to be successful in a cfd and uh, if you are you want to uh, software tools learning the focus on the technology part uh, the software tools will follow so you need to focus on these things that will be important so there are a lot of career opportunities in this code development application side testing and validation documentation of cfd codes these are the career opportunities in cfd uh, this we have already discussed so so in the end i would like cfd is a powerful tool to solve complex flows in engineering problems and extreme care has to be taken uh, in choosing the geometry choosing the flow models so choosing the boundary condition material properties and convergence criteria uh, so thank you um, all uh, i will um, uh, so my email if you anyone uh, can wants to uh, use that i will just uh, anonymize that hello yeah uh, uh, thank you sir thank you very much for this wonderful session sir uh, uh, now i we will like to take some questions Uh, if uh, participants have uh, any question, they can raise their hand so that uh, Dr. Fahad can answer the questions. Uh, please uh, raise your hand if you have any question. There will be option of uh, raising their hand when you go to participants. If you have any question, you can raise your hand. Uh, on the right side, more is there. If you, you click, um, and yeah. there is. in participant list you can go to your name and when you click your name there will be the option of raising your hand or should i unmute all uh i think uh, if uh, uh, i my email is there if anybody wants uh, to write there it, is uh, a there is dr anwar you uh, want to ask some question dr anwar yeah. dr anwar you can unmute yourself dr anwar you can unmute yourself uh, dr anwar uh, there is a option of unmuting yourself uh, i have unmute you uh, but you have to unmute yours on your side uh, dr anwar okay. okay hello everyone uh, hello sir oh. Uh, i want to know about the software tools name of the software tools uh, there is ansys fluent there is ansys cfx there is open foam i forgot to mention that uh, open foam it is very good software uh, okay. there okay. is a open foam is uh, for linux uh, os uh, you can use that and it is very good it has give uh, see the problem with the other cfx ansys they, they don't give a lot of control to the user but in uh, open foam you have a lot of control to use and uh, it is a very good software so you can use uh, open foam for that okay okay, okay. thanks uh, again the the choice of uh, uh, software is also dependent on uh, what type of flow problems you are using this comsol is also there so it is very good for multi physics part okay thanks uh, uh, thank you sir uh, any other who want to ask any question and they can raise their hand or put in chat box uh, i can answer through chat box uh, i can means uh, question uh, i can read the question through chat box if they have any question uh, feedback form link is sent to your chat box and uh, now you can uh, fill the form and if you have any question uh, you can ask through chat box or uh, you can ask through raising the hand uh 
Mr. Rakesh, Rakesh want to ask some question. Rakesh, unmute yourself. Rakesh. Yes, sir. Hmm. Now you can ask question if you have any question. Sir, first of all, good morning, sir. Morning. Good morning. Sir, actually, I want to ask the, what is the basic need of CFD that uh, you have um, mentioned earlier, CFD. What is the basic need of it? Please, sir. See, the basic need is that uh, when you have uh, places uh, where CFD, where experimental fluid dynamics or experimentally you can't measure things or theoretically you cannot calculate, then CFD can be used once um, uh, is there. One, one, uh, one reason is this. Second reason is that if you want to stop the or uh, shorten the cycle time of development of a technology, then also you can use. In India, right now, GE is using, Cummins is using CFD, Mahindra is using, Maruti is using. So all big players uh, are using CFD um, in a very, very uh, big time. And uh, they are trying to shorten the cycle time as much as possible. And they, since you shorten the, uh, sh uh, shorten the time, if you shorten the cycle time, you basically have a lot of uh, money saved. Uh, Fahad, if you allow me a few, uh, one, one or two points I would like to add. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Actually, uh, friend, whoever raised the question, uh, basically when you have a closed form solution, it is very easy to find the solution. But when the uh, things go complicated, your equations uh, are not able to handle. So discretization is the only method, whether it is solids or fluids. Then uh, the complicated, uh, apparently complicated uh, problem can be simplified and then numerically solved and then compu uh, computers can be used uh, for solving the huge uh, differential equations which result from that. Hope you agree. <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally, totally. I have... Uh, not in those words, but I have at the start. I have uh, put this this exactly. Uh, yes, yes, yes. You did. You did. You did. Uh, sir, there is one more question uh, from Dr. Naveen Sharma uh, through chat box. I am telling. Is there any model to generate roughness over a surface? Uh, there is. Uh, I will discuss that in uh, next class. If that is too complicated to answer in. Uh, in this class, um, that will be difficult to answer uh, because I will not be able to uh, link it with any other thing. But uh, I have not seen. Uh, I, I will discuss how to model roughness. I, I have a, a well, that is also a, a, a discussion point. Uh, that is a good question. It is very difficult to model the roughness. Uh, but uh, I will tell you how to. There is a way to do that. At least uh, in my my th thinking, I am working on that project. So I can't uh, tell you much detail about right now, yeah, but I will uh, discuss that. Okay, sir. And question raised hand. Uh, Mr. Mukesh Kumar has raised the hand. So, Mr. Mukesh Kumar, you can ask the question. Yes. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Morning. Very, very informative session. Just I want to know about is it uh, is it. Uh, Hello, audible, sir? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, audible, audible. Yes, yes, yes. Sir. In evaporative cooling system, yeah. is CFD is applicable or not? Yeah, yeah, evaporative cooling system, CFD is applicable. I have seen papers of that. In, in which module it is uh, applicable? Uh, it will be in multiphysics module. Multiphysics? Yeah, then, uh, cooling. In... Okay, okay, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, uh, I will request all other participants who are, uh, want to ask the question and they can note down uh, the email ID of uh, Professor Fahed. Uh, S-F-A-S-F-A-H-A-D-A-N-W-E-R S Fahed Anwar at a rate Z-H-C-E-T dot A-C dot in uh, please note down the email ID. You can ask uh, your queries to Professor Fahed and uh, he will answer uh, your uh, answer questions uh, individually to you. So, Because uh, there will be a girth of questions, uh, so it will be not possible to 
answer all these questions in this session because it is already too late. So I request you all, and I request you all, please uh, fill the feedback form. It is compulsory because we have to track the uh, audience uh, presence in, in this session. So please fill the feedback form. And uh, tomorrow there will be a session at the same time. And uh, at the end, uh, I will like to invite Principal Sir to uh, give a word of thanks to our uh, Professor, uh, Principal Sir. Uh, uh, Dr. Fahed, it was a wonderful presentation, a very insightful and a very comprehensive one covering the entire uh, uh, basics of uh, CFD. Having said that, I would like to, because um, most of us here are, uh, uh, many are faculty members. Actually, you know, uh, there is a problem with engineering education. There are uh, less number of takers because of uh, less number of jobs. Let me tell you here that actually jobs are available, but for the right people. And uh, one of such, you know, that expertise is uh, missing with the engineering graduates, which are coming out. So some value added uh, courses they'll have to do. It is my suggestion that we uh, ask our students to learn some of these uh, hot areas. One of them is CFD. Then there is FEM and all. So if you are, even if you are, uh, you know, there is one block or one section of the jobs available in uh, students which are conversant with the various uh, softwares, which Professor Fahed uh, just now told. And there is one more section uh, when you are able to write codes for this specific uh, physical phenomenon. So, uh, like if you want to go and join GE research or some R&D company, then you have to go for a one step higher. So, um, that was one of the things. Uh, so, let us introduce our students to uh, these value-added uh, courses on CFD and FEM. Uh, with that, uh, I will not take much time and I thank uh, Professor Fahed again and thank you all for uh, your uh, uh, presence. And uh, we'll see you tomorrow. And uh, uh, thank you. Thank you all. Thank, thank you, Dr. Fahed.